Whoever needs such crazy stuff for diving? Hi divers! Last week I was again, pretty much like every year, at the Boat Düsseldorf 2024, the world's largest yacht and water sports show. But it's not only the world's biggest trade show for boats, but Europe's biggest trade show for diving. It's always a great opportunity to see true innovations, but as well to watch out for really peculiar things. So let's recap the most important things I saw last week. Of course, boats. Many boats and even more boats. I love boats, but since I can't afford a yacht anyway, let's get to the Dewey stand. We had a collection of Dewey instructors from all around the world connecting with past or future students or leading workshops right on the stand. Of course, you always meet old friends. Although I enjoyed working on the Dewey stand, it's interesting to stroll around the diving hall. Very often you can find peculiar things and people who have no real connection to diving, like this guy playing the guitar in front of a giant plastic whale. The old automatic fin straps. A thing that looks like a rocket and is apparently for underwater navigation. Neoprene purses. Cozy looking hammocks, singing bowls and hippie dresses. Vacuum cleaners and Strange vibration plates. I remember a talk about pre-dive body vibration to prevent DCS, and I don't know if it has something to do with that. Oh well, and Scuba Pro revived the old toilet seat style buoyancy compensators. I learned diving and something like this, but with a back mounted tank. So chest mount is the new side mount apparently. The German Navy seems to have some problems with entanglement and split fins apparently. But jokes aside, there have been a few nice innovations around not only this new fancy wall of the GOE booth, of course. Yeah, crazy GOE guys hanging around everywhere, so follow along and see the new things coming out in 2024 that I'm excited about. Heinrichs Weikamp is about to release a brand new handheld dive flight. The first overall look was very nice and I got a nice interview with Heinrichs Weikamp about it, so if you don't want to miss it, this would be a great moment to hit the subscribe button. For the ones who love the Santi Magic rings but doesn't particularly like Santi as a manufacturer, will now be happy to see Rofos coming up with their own version of this soft ring system to quickly swap broken seals or attach dry gloves. Next thing, Halcyon's new rubber fins doesn't only look like a Klingon battle axe, but have a great new feature, the removable weights. So with a dry suit you can use the weights, but take them out and get a much lighter fin when you dive a wetsuit in your holidays. Plus, the spring straps are adjustable now. Speaking of Halcyon, Halcyon released a new dive computer that features a heads-up display, but the best thing for instructors is the trim display. There is a sensor on the tank that can measure the angle of the horizontal, and the computer is directly connected to GUE's certification system, so your dive computer can fail you automatically during your fundamentals class. Uh, just kidding. Uh, it might be a funny feature to evaluate your trim, but quite frankly, in the fundamentals course you learn not technical ways to evaluate your trim anyway, so it's really just a gimmick. However, I hope I can put the computer itself to a test, especially to see the HUD in action would be very nice. The HUD is a vital part of another piece of new Halcyon gear and that is Halcyon's new chest mounted rebreather. As I said, chest mount is the new side mount. Halcyon is about to release a new CCR. The unit will be extremely helpful when you travel or use it for exploration where you need a small flexible rebreather. It can be used as an oxygen rebreather or indeed as a full eCCR. It comes with an oxygen bottle strapped to it and uses back or side mounted tanks as dealwind or bailout and even has a very smart design BOV that can be activated by turning a ring on your chest. So the unit has a BOV without the bulkiness of a BOE, which is extremely smart and nice. It uses steady state oxygen sensors, maybe in combination with galvanic sensors, and the steady state sensors don't have to be replaced every year, so this might save you some money on oxygen cells. The rebreather will probably be released by the end of the summer, and I'm really, really pumped to get my hands on one of those. 
I found the concept extremely convincing. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the new rebreather or any other of the sane or insane things I came across the boat 2024 in Dusseldorf, Germany. And in the meantime, watch my other videos like this.